Hey everybody, it's That Sunday School Girl of ThatSundaySchoolGirl.com. I am so happy that you're here to check out the lesson with me for this Sunday, November 29th. Listen, I don't even have to ask how most of your weeks went. I saw your pictures all on Facebook as early as last weekend buying everything in the grocery store because you started cooking on Monday and Tuesday. And yesterday, I mean, tables were looking like HGTV sets, magazine ready, food everywhere. The movie Soul Food had nothing on you. And you know what? I thought it was all fantastic. How incredible that we can take the time to just kind of pull back and enjoy our families and reflect on all that God has done for us. I hope that you had a wonderful time. And if your eating was anything like those pictures reflect, I know the afternoon was football and food comas. I got to enjoy my folks for just a bit and then I had to make a run because it's it's finals time in law school. And so I came to a hotel actually to keep my head down and stay focused. Do I look like a civil procedure expert? Well, I hope so, because that's what I worked on and got my outline uh, in a format that I think works for me. So we'll see how this goes. Keep me in your prayers over the next few weeks. Listen, if you got up this morning and went out to Black Friday, God bless your hearts. That's not my ministry anymore. I think it's been about five years since I've been out there. And those Target commercials are right. I mean, it's like training for a marathon. I mean, you have to, you know, get up early. You've got to be ready to run. And the last time I went, you know, I knew that perhaps it was time for me to retire from Black Friday because, you know, it just, it caused something to stir up in my heart because I like to win. I like to be a winner. And so when my friend, my shopping buddy showed up at my house at 445, and the doors opened at five and we didn't get there until five and all of the 32 inch TVs were gone Ooh, right here in my heart. I felt my chest tightening up and everything. And I said, okay, this is not for you anymore. Fortunately, we did find a TV later on. So I did get to feel like a winner, but I knew then that it was time for me to retire my running shoes on Black Friday. But hey, if you like deals and steals, shameless plug because I support girl bosses check out my necklace. And if you like this one, they have several other great $5 finds. So if you're Christmas shopping, holiday shopping, Kwanzaa, whatever you're doing holiday wise, if you've got a secret Santa, check out my girls, Tisha Williams or Melody Sip. They have awesome online catalogs and you can get your gifts ordered and shipped and never have to leave your home. Now that's ministry right there. So check them out. You'll enjoy their products. So I told you that I am at the Holiday Inn Express. I didn't tell you that. I'm at the Holiday Inn Express in Texarkana, Arkansas. And well, the truth is, I mean, I just had my head down so much this morning that I got a knock on the door. It was housekeeping. Um, are you checking out today? And I'm like, yeah, 12 o'clock, right? Mm, no, checkouts at 11. Can you give me a few more minutes? So I am out of my room, but Rob, who is at the front desk, who is both kind and good looking, I told them that you were good looking, Rob, but seriously allowed me to use a meeting space here to get the video uploaded. And you know what? I just flat made myself at home. That's why you see my hands because I'm talking from a podium and imagining that all of you are in this room with me and that I have this audience of people. And who knows, this may just be great practice because one day I may have the opportunity to do this in front of someone or some group just like you. It may, it may happen. You never know. So I thought I'd practice today. Let's get into the lesson for this week. Our lesson title is Teaching God's Word. The Bible basis is Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 11, and then verses 20 and 21. The Bible truth. Luke writes of Paul's mission of proclaiming the good news of Syria and Ephesus. The memory verse, verses, are verses 9 and 10. The lesson aim is that we will review Paul's zeal for teaching the gospel to the Gentiles, explore feelings after making a transition from a vocation, from rejection to praise, and pray for the success of those whom God has placed in a new situation. So you already know that this is our last lesson in this quarter study, and we have been in the book of Acts the entire time, walking through the journey of the early church from its formation to the expansion now, where we see the message of Jesus Christ being spread throughout the, the land to both Jews and Gentiles. And we've been following Paul for the last couple of weeks, and in this week we are still 
on Paul's second missionary journey. Um, his missionary journey actually, it, this second missionary journey ends in verse 22 of chapter 18, which is where we are this week. And Paul has been many places and he shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with many people, Jews and Gentiles, and people had all sorts of feelings about him opening up that message of grace and of love to other people when the Jews thought it was just for them. And Paul we saw several weeks ago, took a leap and went into the home of a Gentile. And that's when we started to see that me the message being spread. So we've seen a lot. There have been lots of reactions, lots of feelings about what's taken place. Um, and Paul is just really in an interesting place. Now, one thing that's really common, no matter what kind of work we do, all of us are rewarded by something different. So no matter what you do in your workplace, you know, some people, quite frankly, are rewarded by money. Every other Thursday at midnight, I used to say when I worked for my company, if I felt down in my spirit, I got re-encouraged. Yes, re-encouraged every Friday morning when I woke up and they had blessed me on Thursday at midnight. So sometimes it's money. Sometimes it is the reward of seeing other people whose lives are changed by what you do. Sometimes it is the ability to go in and make a difference in your workplace. It, there are different things that reward different people, and that's why reward systems are in place. And there are still times when even in the midst of doing really great work, discouragement can set in. And so, in fact, the Bible is filled with stories of men and women who at some point face discouragement. And quite frankly, that is where we really see um, Paul today. If you dig into the lesson, you'll find that he was really, really in a place of discouragement. If you think again, career wise, if you ask people kind of why they chose to do what they do, some people will say, well, I like things that are different. I like people. And then some folks say, you know what? I just like that I get to do something new all of the time. Like my projects are not the same. I'm not always going to the same places and it's always staying fresh and staying relevant. Well, you know what? Paul could say, some of the same things. I'm somewhere new all the time. It's always moving. It's always changing. Um, and you look at his life and we look at the lives of ministry leaders sometimes and leaders in general. And sometimes it's easy to make the mistake that their lives are perfect, that they're without issue, that they're always on a high. Um, and I say this often, if you look in ministry, a lot of credit, quite frankly, is given to the pulpit. We look at the people who are up front, the people who are seated up front, people who uh, get microphone time. And, and at the same time, we think that everything is so perfect and so buttoned up for them when in actuality, nothing could be further from the truth. And that is really what's going on in the life of Paul. If we consider even what we've seen over the last few weeks, um, although we've studied it in, you know, a couple of blocks, the truth is it's been just a few months, but there's been a lot going on. The last three Sunday school lessons have been very active, and yet that was the span of just a few short months. Looking at the fact that several weeks ago, we looked at Paul in Philippi, and his, his process was the same in every city. He would go preach in the synagogue. Somebody would get mad. Uh, he'd face some sort of opposition, and he would have to leave. In Philippi, that opposition, quite frankly, was a physical beating, to leave the city physically beaten. And, and you know, not just a small tap on the hand, physical beating uh, and having to move to the next place, to take your, your tired and whipped body and go to the next city. We saw him next in Thessalonica, where he... Again, went to the synagogue, faced opposition, and by night, like it was such a serious situation that it was by night that he had to leave the city, and he goes on to Berea. In Berea, same thing. He's teaching, he's preaching, and quite frankly, it's the Thessalonica, Thessalonians 35 miles away who hear what's going on in Berea, and they come there to run him out of that city. And from there he goes to Athens where he has the chance again to preach again. And that is where we left him in last week's lesson, and that is where the transition happens into this week where he has now come to the city of Corinth. Again, he's moving, he's ministering, he's faced physical challenge, and today where we enter the lesson, we see a man who's in a situation where the work has gotten really heavy. Um, he's feeling very little success, and quite frankly, he's feeling very lonely. Because at the end of the day, all of that that we've seen him go through was a whole lot when you consider the fact that Paul is just a man. He's a human being. So the lesson picks up in verse 1. It says, after these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, 
born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife, Priscilla. Now, I'm not going to take you verse by verse, but let's just talk about what's going on. You have this man who's discouraged, this preacher, this great evangelist who's done so much good work, and he's discouraged. He's in a new place. And you notice that it's just him in this new place. Last week, we saw Timothy and Silas in various parts of the lesson. But here, this transitions, and it says that it was Paul who went to Athens. It's just Paul. He's all by himself. He's by himself and he's in a new place. Now, some of us like new places because they're adventurous. Some of us are not so excited because it always means having to figure out things all over again. Um, I'll be very honest with you. I like new places, but that figuring it out process, because I know you don't believe this, but I'm actually an introvert by nature. So this whole idea of, you know, starting over and meeting new people, that takes effort and energy. And so here is this man. He goes to Corinth. Corinth is pretty much the next big city. It was a city of commerce. Um, it was a lot going on there. And quite frankly, it was a city of sexual immorality. Um, as a matter of fact, it, those who were sexually immoral were called Corinthians. And they had uh, they worshipped in the temple, which was dedicated to Aphrodite, also known as Venus, who was the goddess of fertility and sexuality. Um, there were temple prostitutes, and quite frankly, it was a, a proud badge of honor to be a prostitute, and they were regarded highly. So a lot going on in this city, and yet Paul was there for an extended amount of time relative to where we've seen him before, where he was there for just a few days or a few weeks. He actually stays in Corinth for 18 months, and here Paul meets new people. Interesting that one of the greatest gifts that God gives us is our friends. Um, it always seems better when you don't have to do something by yourself. And let's be clear, loneliness is real. And you can be in a room full of people and still be lonely. It is truly about the quality of relationships that you're able to develop because things are just different when you have the right people, not just people, but when you have the right people who are around you. And so God allowed an issue to develop in another place that would cause Priscilla and Aquila to have to move to Corinth. And there was an issue in Rome. There, One historian wrote that um, there were riots taking place because of uh, a movement of Christus. And th there's some suspicion that maybe Christus had to do uh, with Jesus Christ, but it was so, it was such a tumultuous, tumultuous situation that people were sent away. And so a situation in another place that God allowed to happen so that two people would be in Corinth, which is where Paul would need them to be. Again, they most likely chose Corinth for no reason, except that it was, although sexually, sexually immoral, it was a great city. And they actually came to Paul. They were interested in working with Paul. Again, God sends us what we need. He sends us who we need when we're open to that. And they're a husband and wife team, and they happen to be tent makers. Now, there are no coincidences in life. They just happen to be tent makers. And Paul was a tent maker. Yeah, no, not a coincidence. But they were able to work together. It was Paul's occupation. So another note to make is that um, although Paul was on the mission field, and it was, he certainly believed in the support of missionaries. He never wanted to put himself in a position where people would say, you know, he's not working or we send him money all the time or he's taking advantage of us in any way. Uh, Paul had a trade. And you know, the truth is we don't like to pay the preacher. We don't. We want to know what the preacher is doing with the money and what the preacher did to earn the money. And if he's full time ministry, what is he doing all day? That's just how we are. It's how we act. Um, but you know, again, Paul believed in support. In fact, um, he referenced um, support of missionaries in some other text. And, you know, it was like, you don't make a big deal over shepherds and over farmers who make a living from their trade. So why would it be a problem to support those who are on the mission field? And the key really is about support. And again, he just never wanted to position himself as having, having taken advantage of people. So again, he didn't expect to receive support from the church. And at the same time, when it happened, he was always appreciative for it. In fact, the rabbis taught back then that he who does not teach his son to work teaches him to steal. So they believed in work. Uh, Paul was also a bachelor. So, you know, he could live a different way. When you don't have people that you have to worry about, you can take different risks and sort of live a different way. And so he had a little more flexibility because of his, his lifestyle. 
Here's what Paul did when he got to Corinth. He reasoned in the synagogue on every Sabbath. In other words, he discussed and he debated among the Jews and the Greeks um, the scripture. And he had the chance to be very diligent in the work that he was doing. He was committed and yet he was not full-time ministry because he was he was a tent maker. So he was making tents. He was doing work while also spending time on the Sabbath in the synagogue. But in verse 5, we see something different. We see that Silas and Timothy arrived. And at that point, he then, the scripture says, was able to devote himself exclusively to the teaching and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Now, um, Paul now not only has his new friends, but God has sent his old friends and they were really important. Again, people who have that bond, that connection with you can really bring a different level of encouragement and a different level of energy. But even more importantly, Timothy and Silas brought news from another place that Paul had been and he missed those people. He, he really thought about, um, them a lot and it grieved him when he had to leave Thessalonica um, and so he had been very distracted so that was also a source of his disappointment loneliness and then kind of feeling like uh, not having some business completed and longing to know what happened in a place that you had to leave so readily as leaders sometimes we like to have plans that are well developed and we like to you know measure success and be able to go back and see and say what was what was good and what we could do differently he didn't get that opportunity um, so he was really um, longing for the people of Thessalonica. He was confident that he was doing what God wanted him to do, and yet that was bothering him. And we know that from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, where he writes and he expresses those feelings. And you should take some time and read that. I don't have time to read it to you now. But he goes on to say that I thought about you and, and I feel better now. Now that Timothy and Silas are here, he says things are better. So clearly that was a source of concern for him. And now that he knew that everything was okay in Thessalonica, verse 5 says that he was able basically to go hard for Jesus Christ. He he changed his, his not just reasoning and debating. He was now giving the message, strictly the message of Jesus Christ. So again, Paul, new place. He's preaching. What do you expect to happen? There's resistance. And the resistance in chapter 18 is that they blasphemed Jesus Christ. They blasphemed the message of Jesus Christ. And Paul's response was this. Um, he says, you know what? I'll just go to the Gentiles. If this is not what you want, I will go to the Gentiles. And I, I always like Paul because he doesn't really get out of sorts. He stays very grounded even when he's facing difficult things. And he says that I'll go on, but guess what? Listen, your blood is not going to be on my hands. It's going to be on your head because you've chosen to reject the message of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he shook his garments as a sign of, I don't even want the dust from this place on me. He shook his garments and he went on and took his message to another place. Um, it goes on to tell us, this lesson tells us that um, when he was put out, he actually just went next door. Um, there was... Um, a leader next door whose name was, let me find my place in my notes because I'm not starting this video all over again. I love y'all mean it. Where's this in my notes? There it is. Titius Justice. He went next door to the house of Titius Justice. And as well, there was a leader of the synagogue named Crispus and he and his entire household believed the Lord and many were baptized. And as this portion of the lesson ends, we see that the Lord himself actually encourages Paul from this place of discouragement. He sent friends and now the Lord himself encourages him and he makes, he, he speaks to him and he uh, comes to him by a vision. And in this vision, he gives him three promises. The first thing is that he tells him, I am always with you. He promises his presence. He promises that he never has a reason to be afraid for the position that he takes or for his preaching and teaching. He promises that he would always be there, that he understood that he would be there to help. The second thing he promised was his protection, that I will protect you. And lastly, God says, I have people in this city. I have people, and although they're not converted yet, you don't know who they are, they're already mine. So he promised his power. Paul goes on to do good work and he later writes back to the Corinthian church because it begins, it becomes a special place to him. Here are my learnings. I've got to wrap this up. Let me go quickly. 
We cannot always be interested in sharing God's love in places and with people where we think it's just going to be easy. We have to be willing to take risks. It may not be easy. They may not even want to hear all that you have to say, but if we're prayerful about how we share, we can be confident that God will give us the way to do it and the ways that are appropriate. Next, we should make a record and record, re make a record and rehearse those great and growing moments in your ministry and your journey so that when those days come and those times of disappointment come, you'll be able to go back and remind yourself of what it is that God has done. Next, you should think about how you would share your faith if you were in a new place or with a new neighbor. That's just a challenge. Think about that. Many times doors will close, but it doesn't mean that God is not opening another. So when, when Paul was run out of the synagogue, one door closed and literally, literally, Titius Justice right next door, another door is open. So it doesn't even mean that the open door is far away. Lastly, just as the Lord encouraged Paul, don't stop, don't quit, keep speaking. Never let anyone or anything silence your voice. Uh, the voice that you have to speak of the good things of Christ, to share his love. Listen, tomorrow night, 9 p.m., please join Superintendent Michael Payton in Illinois First Jurisdiction for the Saturday Night Sunday School Line. They're going to go far more in-depth than my Over the Limit video this week. Their number is 605-475-3235. Access code is 170045-POUND. I've got to run. The fish fry is on in about 15 minutes, and I don't want to be at the back of the line. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Bye-bye.